Well, again, we're trying to uh, cover the Christmas event, not the story, because uh, there's lots of stories about Christmas, which are fables, and we we're looking at a real event. So today we're looking at a second visit to the Christ child, uh, found only in uh, Matthew uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And uh, we're going to talk about a few things about Christmas that are probably not very accurate. Uh, first of all, we celebrate Christmas in December. It's not likely that it was December uh, with shepherds out in the fields and, and uh, watching their flock. Not likely in December, but uh, nevertheless we uh, would believe there's probably more around March or April. In any case, uh, the second part that uh, we have here that is really <laughs> messed up because of tradition and what we've seen and heard so much and that is we even had uh, for a long time in our hymnals the we three kings uh, well first of all there weren't necessarily three as a matter of fact it's highly unlikely that it was only three uh, these uh, magi traveled in larger numbers especially when they were traveling that far from home uh, but uh, there were three gifts that were given, and that's, that's how that got to boil down to three. Uh, kings was absolutely incorrect, because these were astrologers, uh, science men, not, not kings. And uh, they, that's how they happened to notice the star, which was a supernatural uh, light that came in the, uh, in the uh, sky to, to lead these uh, men of science who were undoubtedly aware of the Hebrews' writings and teachings and uh, knew that a Messiah had been forecast with a special star. And that was interesting to them because that's what they were interested in is stars. And uh, so we find the fulfillment of uh, Micah uh, 5.2 and uh, Jeremiah 23.5. Uh, and... Uh, it's quite interesting. You, you can do some divine speculation here, but it, the divine speculation that uh, John Phillips does is quite interesting. Uh, he found that uh, during uh, two years prior to Jesus' birth, uh, there was an alignment of Jupiter and Saturn, which made a particularly bright light in the sky. And one year, or slightly less than that, uh, it was joined by Mars. So it was Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars would uh, put out an incredible amount of light with the three of them uh, in conjunction with each other. And it only happens every 800 years. <laughs> so God could have supernaturally put any kind of star in the sky he wanted to to try to guide them uh, to uh, uh, Bethlehem. Uh, but more than likely, uh, According to John Phillips, it was the alignment of these three uh, planets uh, that caused the great light. Uh, the age, the uh, ages and the names of the three kings, which was really three magi, uh, only by tradition, not scriptural at all. Um, and so we find uh, a lot of uh, tradition there uh, influencing uh, the the thoughts of most people as they read this. The other thing that's uh, always fascinating about the wise men uh, is the fact that uh, they didn't come shortly after the shepherds came. Uh, there was probably one to two years de between the visits. And you'll see that not only in the fact that uh, they came and found him in a house instead of a stable, uh, but you'll also find that they saw the light that signified his birth uh, before they actually got there and it was a long travel uh, so uh, and when Herod uh, was concerned about him taking over as king of Israel uh, and he ordered for the children to be uh, slaughtered uh, they would be from two years and under uh, so a time had passed uh, between the shepherd's visit and the wise men's visit now the wise men went to Jerusalem because that would be the likely place for the king of Israel to be born and uh, 
they had to inquire around and find out that uh, no, actually, uh, this King of Kings and Lord of Lords would be born in Bethlehem, the city of David. And so they traveled a short distance uh, from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. Now Herod had told them to come back and report. What's really interesting here is there's two wonderful ways that we see God uh, influencing his people and talking to his people through dreams and warnings. And uh, they warned, God warned the Magi to return a different way and not to go back and tell Herod because Herod had impure motives. He wasn't going to go and worship Jesus, as he said, but he was going to come and make sure that Jesus didn't survive. Uh, and so they went back another way. They were warned by God. And Joseph and Mary were warned by God uh, that Herod was going to take this action against the children on two and under, and so they fled to Egypt. Uh, so we find some really interesting ways that God can speak to us and interfere and uh, show his sovereignty over the events of history. Uh, but I thought you might be interested to know uh, wrong time. <laughs> they went to the wrong place, but uh, got put back on track. The uh, star could have been the three planets, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars, but it might have been supernatural star that God put up there just specifically for this purpose. Uh, all of these things, we gotta be careful when we uh, look at songs and we look at uh, various traditions of man uh, that we uh, don't take them as scriptural, uh, especially like naming the uh, three wise men uh, that came and uh, the special ages that one was young, one was middle-aged, and one was older. Uh, we've got to stay with Scripture, and Scripture tells us that they brought uh, gifts which were pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, they were all valuable. Uh, gold was suitable as a treasure for a king, and Jesus, of course, would be king of kings. And uh, frankincense uh, was uh, a perfume or uh, almost a... Uh, uh, an essence that uh, could be uh, burned uh, and uh, that was uh, to be burned for deity, a uh, spiritual leader. Uh, and myrrh, of course, was used in embalming uh, because Jesus was bound uh, to death uh, and we know that he was also bound to a resurrection. So we find the gifts appropriate, uh, the costly gifts, uh, not necessarily three magi or three kings but uh, three gifts all of great value most importantly we rec recognize the wise men the magi fell to their knees and worshiped a child now they had to believe that uh, the star was from god they had to believe that this child was to be the sovereign one the messiah that the jews had been waiting for because there was no hesitation in them falling to their knees and worshiping a child. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day. Well, how can you be sure you're going to heaven? My son said I should never end a message without telling people how they can be sure they're going to heaven. You can find it easily in just a few verses in the book of Romans. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin is anything that's displeasing to God. We all sin every day. My unclean thoughts, a quick answer to someone that's inappropriate, uh, whatever it might be, we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. And we know that the wages of sin are death. Romans 6.23 tells us that clearly. The wages of sin are death. We're all guilty of sin, and we all deserve death. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's it. That's, that's exactly how God showed his love. He allowed us to see that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, died for us and rose again to prove that he had the power over death. Now watch this. How do we obtain this? It's one thing to know it. You can have it here in your head, but not down in your heart. You know, here's how we obtain it. If we confess and believe in our heart, God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And it says believing 
it's considered righteousness, not our own righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. With our mouth we confess. And it says, and, and when we confess, it results in salvation. In verse 13, it goes on and says, whoever will call upon the Lord shall be saved. So if you've confessed your sin and said, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that you died for my sins. I'm going to turn from sin and self and to you and to you alone. Then you can know for certain if you really meant it, really meant it, then you know that you have eternal life in heaven. I hope that you've prayed a prayer similar to that, that you've acknowledged Christ as your Savior, that you've invited him into your life to be your Lord and your Master, that you've turned from sin and self and received him to be the Lord of your life. And that's my prayer for you. Remember, at the end of this clip, there's an opportunity for you to see the last lesson that we had and also a clip that says how you can have peace in a broken world with the three circle illustration. It's a wonderful witnessing tool to share with others if they don't know Christ as Savior and to see how God fixed a broken world. God bless you and have a great day.